Since the beginning of time, for one reason or another, man has been faced with taxes. Frankly, I don't like taxes either, but let's face it, we have to have them out of necessity. You see, as prehistoric man left to hunt early each morning, he left his cave, his wife and children, unguarded against ferocious animals. And less honorable men who were content to live on whatever they could pilfer and steal from the caves of the hunters. Stella! Look what I brought you! Stella? Stella? Children? To top it off, they had the audacity to paint mustaches on his cave drawings. Something had to be done. It was decided that one of them would stay behind each day while the others went out to hunt. behind to defend the cave had enough food for his own family, all the others had to give up a share of their catch each night when they returned. Even in the beginning, the tax collector never won a popularity contest. Well, as man progressed, uh -oh. No sense in confusing archaeologists, right? Taxes played an important role throughout history. Taxes built the pyramids and temples, as well as the aqueducts and highways constructed centuries later in another civilization. A close look at American history reveals that without food, clothing, and arms supplied by taxes, the United States would never have survived. As time went on, our civilization grew, and life around us became more and more complex. Taxes began to play an ever-increasing part in our lives. Today, taxes are used to build our highways, to maintain our parks and forests. And for national defense. In addition, our taxes are used for science, research, and to make this country what it is today. Collecting taxes today in the United States is no small business. 
and the methods of collecting them differ greatly from the methods used in years gone by due to the complexities of life today. You know what I mean? Much of the work is done by electronic machines like this one. With a staff of only 51,000 employees scattered throughout the national headquarters, nine regional offices, 64 districts, three service centers, and 900 local offices, as well as overseas branches in Latin America, Europe, and Asia. You just can't escape. The Internal Revenue Service maintains a streamlined operating organization, which handles yours and approximately 100 million other returns each year. With devices mechanical and electronic, like myself, the Internal Revenue Service is now offering you the world's most practical and effective administration of revenue laws. And at a cost of less than one half a cent for every dollar collected. Hold it right there. Just hold it right there. If you're trying to make everything so practical, just tell me something. Why do they make the tax forms so complicated, huh? Keep in mind that you are only one taxpayer, that there are almost a hundred million others, each one with his own personal situation and special problems. And it just isn't possible to prepare one form that fits exactly the income and deductions of each taxpayer. Also, these forms, in a sense, represent a translation of some very complex and technical provisions of tax law. As for who thinks up these things, well, in Washington, inside the Internal Revenue Service headquarters, a special committee meets regularly to consider the matter of forms. They receive ideas and suggestions from tax experts, technical advisors, and many other sources, including suggestions made by you, the taxpayer. The good ideas show up on the final forms adopted each year. Considering today's complex financial circumstances and the numerous details of tax law, forms are as simple as careful thought and planning can make them. Realizing that booklets alone may not always provide exact answers to all the thousands of tax situations that exist, the Internal Revenue Service offers you extensive telephone assistance as well as office aid where needed no matter where you live. Fill out your return as far as you can. Then, if you have a problem, call your district office of internal revenue. The telephone numbers are published periodically in your newspapers or on TV. In this way, you can get the necessary help with a minimum of inconvenience to yourself. To make things easier on future taxpayers, income tax instruction is given in high schools and junior high schools throughout the nation by educators from materials prepared by the Internal Revenue Service. Sorry to cut you off again, buddy, but I got another question. Suppose I fill it out correctly. What happens to my tax return after I mail it in? Oh, yeah. What are you Internal Revenue people doing the eight and a half months after we send it in, huh? Huh? Utilizing electronic machines in one of three service centers like this, Internal Revenue personnel process and mathematically verify millions of income tax returns. In addition, some returns are verified by other means. If an error is discovered, the Internal Revenue Service will bring this to the taxpayer's attention and will take it into account in determining the size of his refund check or bill. So you see, in addition to making a final audit, collecting and enforcing the withholding portion of your income tax, as well as keeping all the records, the Internal Revenue Service is responsible during the remaining eight and a half months of each year for the collection and enforcement of the employer's portion of the Social Security tax and the unemployment tax. It is only through your willingness to voluntarily fill out your personal and business returns and pay your taxes that the job of collecting and processing is accomplished as quickly as it is. Well, this, in a nutshell, 
is the story of your Internal Revenue Service. We bring it to you because we feel that you, as the taxpayer, should know something about how it's organized, how it works, its problems, and how it can assist you with yours. Maybe the next time you think about federal taxes, you'll think about the Internal Revenue Service as an organization made up of your fellow citizens with a big and vital job to do, collecting taxes. Thank you.